Good afternoon and welcome to The Balance of Life. This is Angel Ferguson, your host. We thank you for joining us today for truly this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is a Friday for some of us. It is a continued work week. visiting our website at www.aferguson.simplesite.com Via the website you have the opportunity of checking out our publishing division Hope and Truth magazine our ministry the bookstore, Motivation That Inspires Bookstore. You can also subscribe to the magazine. Each new subscription will receive a complimentary issue. 12 issues are $36. Other avenues in which you can connect with us are via Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Google, our YouTube channel, iTunes, and you can also find us on iHeartRadio under The Balance of Life. On yesterday, we started a session, a session entitled, When God Confuses the Enemy, and we took a look over at Second Chronicles, looking at King Jehoshaphat, and an instance where God confused the enemy, and, and how Jehoshaphat, because he had a heart after God, he lifted up his heart to God, and, and even when he found that he had erred by creating a an alliance without consulting God he repented and he he just didn't repent for himself because he acted on behalf of uh, the regimen in which he was king he he led those individuals to take part in something that God did not ordain so he did not just ask for repentance for himself and go before God and ask for forgiveness he did it for those people as well and I think that it is so important that when we call someone to error that we ask for forgiveness not just for ourselves but for them also and we want to be very careful that we are not hindrances unto God's people or to anyone uh, check your motive and what you are doing so that you do not hinder or deter anyone and so in this continued study, when God confuses the enemy, we're going to take a look at another example. And we pray that the words that we share with you, that you will apply these words to your life, that it becomes edification unto your body, unto your soul, and, and that you become so uncomfortable you will often hear me say as you follow our podcast it is my prayer that you become so uncomfortable in your present state that it will draw you closer to Christ that you will seek to find a, a closeness a resolution for the hunger I pray that your hunger for the knowledge of him increases and that your thirst becomes more intense. Seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and his righteousness, 
and all those things all things all things shall be added unto thee and those things that shall be added unto thee is him supplying your needs according to his riches and glory and and as we take a look over in Matthew's the sixth chapter Christ is saying I know that you have need of these things and I shall supply those things but first seek ye the kingdom of heaven uh, our day-to-day -day life is not supposed to be about food and clothing and and where we should live and it, it's about seeking the kingdom of heaven and and I I have to say this that it grows unto spiritual maturity that you keep your focus there and that you give thanks for all things is a God He has even granted you the desires of your heart. I'm learning that things that come against me and th Pray for everyone. Don't be selective in who you pray for. Even pray for those who know. And has all manner of things about you. What we want to get across to you is to make sure that your motive...
And then we have to be renewed in the spirit of our mind. Romans that you have seeking the kingdom of heaven seeking his righteousness will allow us and it will help us to do just that we cannot do it on our own but we need the help of the holy spirit the guidance we all must die to our flesh I can definitely say that there are times that if a thought comes, a question, you know, I've learned to say, mm, that's none of your business. I've learned in my life and in my walk in Christ to be careful what I put my mouth on and, and what I discuss and what I think about. Because one thing I have experienced, there are some things that I put my mouth on and I've, I have meaning that I have commented in it or given my opinion and I have found that I have gone through some things because I had an opinion that I knew nothing about. Because I, I, I gave what, what I would do and what I thought. And God said, that's, that's not what I told you to do. It, you, we, we hear about situations so that we can pray about it. Not to sit in gossip or be judgmental. So I want to tell you today to please be careful of what you discuss and what you think about and your opinion and what you would do and what you wouldn't take and, and things of that nature because you will find yourself going through some things and, and you will sit and you will question and, and how did I end up here and, and why am I going through this and, and I want to tell you that the Holy Spirit will bring back to your remembrance the things that you discussed that you had no knowledge of not for us to judge why someone goes through why they go through or what they take or what they wouldn't take or, or anything like that it is our obligation to pray about it to lift that person up in prayer and so I want to tell you today and I know that uh, we are going to discuss when God confuses the the enemy but if we are helping the enemy How can we then expect God to confuse him when we have invited him in and to entertain thoughts and conversations and actions? And and so at one point within, as we discussed Jehoshaphat on yesterday, he made a an alliance that he did not consult God on. And that enemy turned on him. He wasn't the intended target. But he found himself in a battle. And that is what happens to us. We put ourselves into situations. And it had nothing to do with us from the beginning. We were supposed to just pray about it. But we put our two cents in. We have thoughts and, 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 and no, keep your hand off of it. Keep your mouth off of it, meaning do not discuss it. Stop giving place to the enemy. Stop being his tool. And when we stop being his tool, our hands are clean.
is the business spotlights. Who have uh, perfected their Kit Swanson and author Marie Argerton and we also include some words of inspiration and lessons from our mentoring program. We include a hot pick of the month from our bookstore and other material that we have read. So check us out our March issue will soon be available. You can also subscribe to the magazine via our website www.afergusonswrp.simplesite.com or you can email us at afergusonwrp at yahoo.com subject line new subscription for Hope and Truth magazine 12 issues or $36 and upon your new subscription we will send you a complimentary issue as we are continuing our discussion when God causes your enemies to be confused. Yesterday we looked at Jehoshaphat. And today we're going to take a look at another great example and we are going to go over to 2 Kings, the sixth chapter beginning at the 8th verse. Then the king of Assyria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, In such and such a place shall be my camp. And the man of God sent unto the king of Israel, saying, Beware that thou pass not such a place, for, that, for thither the Syrians are come down. And the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him, and warmed him of, and saved himself there not once nor twice, meaning continual. And as I study this, this area of passage, it, it tells me that there were several times, each time, the king of Syria was going to attack from one angle God allowed his messenger his prophet Elisha to tell the king the enemy may come at you one way 
and God will lead and direct you not to go that route. It is so important that when we receive instructions from God through the Holy Spirit, that we take heed to those instructions. We receive those instructions for a reason, and they come to us in a manner, and God wants to know, first of all, that we can handle order. And he's giving us those directions and those avenues to take because he sees what is ahead. And he is trying to make sure that we do not fall into the snares of the enemy. And a lot of times we do fall into the snares of the enemy because we can't follow instructions. We want to do it our way. We know the path, we know what's best, but he's saying that I need you to go this way because the enemy has a snare and a trap set up for you there. But if you would go this route, you're out of harm's way and the enemy is confused. And what happens also is, is we, we, we set ourselves in patterns and we set ourselves in traditions and we, we, we have to do it this way. But God is saying, I need you to go this way. But unless we are seeking him, unless we are in prayer, prayer is a two-way thing. It is communication, it is praying, and it is listening. And if we are not in tune with the Holy Spirit, if we are not listening, we're going to miss those very important instructions and details. Another thing that is so important is, is, is the order of those instructions. We might have our, 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 our road map planned out to go a certain way. But he's saying, I, I need you to make a detour. I need you to go around versus going straight. There is a reason. But because we can become so set in ourselves, we, we will override that. And, and no, we will, we will tell ourselves or we will listen to the opinions of others. And we will say, no, but that's the better route. But God is saying, I need you to make a detour. And we will find that as we do not listen to the instructions of God and we decide to override those instructions and we go straight instead of making a detour that trouble is up ahead and we are hindered and we are blocked and some things that you will miss and you might have an appointment to be there at one or two but because you did not listen to God you can't make that appointment and you've missed an opportunity you've missed a blessing you have missed and I want to tell you this, that, that even as, as we are going over this portion of our topic, that w when we miss things, that, that is another reason why we have to keep going through the same thing, because we have continually missed it. And until you can grab hold and follow those directions in the order in which they have come, you are going to have to keep going through that same test until you can slow down sometimes you might even have to stop but until you get it
because I'm not I'm not trusting. Follow those instructions. The enemy is there waiting. to our study time and our prayer time. us up when we come together into the house of the Lord. Or we should not think within ourselves. Let me raise my hand because I know that they're going to ask. That's not true worship. But if I can recall the words of the song that we used to sing, With my heart lifted up. My heart. He is after our heart. And so I said all of that to, to, to say that this, when we do not follow these things, we give place to the enemy. And once again, how can he be confused if we're giving him tools to use against us? And so this king of Israel, and we are over in 2 Kings, the 6th chapter. He followed the instructions of the man of God. It says, saved himself not once nor twice, which means several times. Because the enemy is not going to give up. He is not going to let up. So why are you, why are you getting relaxed in your prayer, in your reading of the word of God, in your seeking after the knowledge of Christ? 
in your being a witness why are you slacking up because he is waiting for that moment when you slack up and what happens when we slack up doubt begins to set in and being complacent and stagnant has an opportunity to infiltrate your thoughts your actions And we can't hear what God is trying to tell us. And over in the 11th verse, it says, Therefore the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? See, he was confused. He's saying that I have my team and I have those that are with me and we have created this plan and, and everyone here as far as I know is for defe defeating the, the children of Israel but every time I set a trap for them they don't show up and I'm expecting them because I know they're normal. I'm expecting them to come this way because this is what they would normally do and that is what the enemy is saying about you he's saying it about us I know they're normal I know exactly what it's going to take for them to get into a praise for them to seek God I know that they're really not going to get into their word and to pray until trouble hits their door but if you would get into that position every day if you would seek him daily and not only when you have trouble you are confusing the enemy and so I say to you that as we are looking at this section Verse 12 says, And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha the prophet that is in Israel, telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. You see, Elisha was continually in prayer. He meditated on the word of God day and night. He communicated with God so that he could hear from him. You are not listening 
to God, you will get caught up in that snare. He will give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. The skirt of protection. God's skirt of protection is all around us as we are obedient. And when they came down to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite this people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. Why are we even here? The spirit of confusion will hit your enemy. But we must get into a place where we are hearing the voice of God, the directions. Your enemy could come up against you and, and forget why they came. Why am I attacking this person? Why am I pursuing this person? It is because we kept ourselves in right standing with God. And Elisha said unto them, This is not the way, neither is this the city. Follow me, and I will bring you to the man whom ye seek. But he led them to Samaria. And it came to pass when they were come into Samaria that Elisha said, Lord, open the eyes of these men that they may see. And the Lord opened their eyes and they saw and behold, they were in the midst of Samaria. And the king of Israel said unto Elisha, when he saw them, my father, shall I smite them? Shall I smite them? And he answered, Thou shalt not smite them. Wouldest thou smite those whom thou hast taken captive? with thy sword and with thy bow set bread and water before them that they may eat and drink and go to their master and he prepared great provision for them and when they had eaten and drunk he sent them away and they went to their master so the bands of Syria came no more into the land of Israel it is not your job it is not our job for vengeance or revenge We are to pursue peace and love. And I pray right now that the spirit of spite be removed from you, from all of us. That we have a spirit of forgiveness. Because remember, in our, in our time, we have trespassed. We have hindered others. And if you do not have a spirit of forgiveness for those who are on earth, God will not have a spirit of forgiveness towards you. And I know our flesh. I can say I know my flesh. Well, God, they did this and they did that. But ask yourself this question. Who is confessing Christ? Who is confessing the knowledge of Christ? Who is confessing that he is Lord and Savior? 
And as we are coming to a close, here is something for you to consider. Even when reading this passage and, and, and it's still not clicking for you, imagine Jesus. He was beaten. They pushed thorns into his head. He had to carry his own cross. He was nailed to that cross. But his reaction was, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. He stood in the gap for their repentance. He became intercessor at that moment. He had the opportunity. He had the power. But instead, he became intercessor. And I encourage you today that no matter what you're going through and no matter what you are facing, become intercessor. Become the man and woman that God has called you to be. Intercede, not just for your favorites or, or those who you love or who you like, but become intercessor for those who have even come up against you. Because it is not you personally, but it is the Spirit of God that is in you. It is a hindrance and a determent to get you off of the path that God would have you on. But you must be into His presence through prayer, through studying the Word of God, and through listening. I pray for your humble spirit and heart. We love you. Stay encouraged, encouraging others along the way. Have a blessed afternoon.